From our studios at historic Arnold's Park Amusement Park, it's Okaboji Broadcast with Jeff Thee. Welcome to Okaboji Broadcast, everybody. Happy weekend, happy Labor Day weekend, as a matter of fact. And I have as my guest today, Mr. Jason Harrington. He is the CEO and President of Lakes Regional Healthcare right here in our own Okaboji area, Lakes Regional. So, how are you? I'm well. L like everyone, I think looking forward to the Labor Day weekend and always it's always kind of a sad time around here at the same time I you know people are starting to pull boats out and oh yeah closing their lake homes for the summer and it, you know it's just it, it there there is some a little bit of sadness there that is. comes along with it I always get that let down as well you you're boating by the amusement park and the Ferris wheel isn't going and screams and, sure. and uh, so you you appreciate the older you get I think the more you appreciate yeah. the good weather and and thankfully this year lots of people in the Iowa Great Lakes yeah it's really it's been a super busy summer and we you know as, as the volume increases so does the demand on our services and so yeah um, but yeah it's been it's been a great summer I've been you know I'm thankful to have a really dedicated staff that um, it's, it's worked very hard the entire summer and, and uh, as they do always. Absolutely. So. Well, we're here today because, uh, and I want to talk first of all about the Patient and Affordable Care Act that was passed, I think, in 2010 okay. by, by Congress. What that means to, well, any hospital, but or, or non nonprofit? It's yeah, right. So, nonprofit or community hospitals, and, and, and kind of the, the what precipitated that, and actually, Senator Grassley it has always been. I, I don't want to say concerned, but, but wants to ensure that nonprofits, particularly community hospitals, are meeting their charitable mission. Right. And, and so what, what passed at that point in time was the requirement, and there's a requirement for hospitals, which is every three years. Right. There's a requirement for public health every five years. So we manage Dickinson County Public Health on behalf of the county, so they're a department of ours. So, so we've made the, de the decision over time to do both of those surveys together. It, it makes sense, I think strategically, there's a lot of, of overlap and marriage between public health and primary care and, and community needs. And so, so we actually end up doing the public health one more frequently than we're required to. But, right. but so, so every three years, and so what, what it requires is you to do a community health needs assessment. And, and so what that assessment entails, really to a large degree is up to every individual community. But, but what the requirement says is, is that as part of your charitable mission, you need to reach out to the community, you need to do data assessment, you need to look at you know, the, the variety of different data that's available regionally, nationally, locally, right. and, and use that for a basis of putting together this community health needs assessment. We refer to it as a CHINA, it, acronyms all over healthcare, right. CHINA. <laughs> yeah. so, so, and then from that community health needs assessment, the, the more important part and the broader requirement is you put together a health improvement plan. So, so you take the data that you heard, you, you take the analysis of, of what you've heard from the community, which is part of what we'll talk about, and that becomes the basis for this health improvement plan. Okay. For Lakes Regional Healthcare, some of that also becomes the basis for our strategic plan in the going forward. Right. So. Right. So the last one you would have done would have been three uh, 2018. I'm. Yeah. yeah, I think that's right. So it was sometime in the last three years, for right. sure. Yeah. So did you have any findings at that time that uh, you looked at and uh, okay, here's here's some needs and maybe what you've done with that information from three years ago. Yeah, I think in, in some of this I'm just kind of pulling off the top of my head. I right. didn't reference it before I came in, but, but so um, mental health services is one and, and certainly a significant need in the state, in the country. Yeah. It, it's probably amplified a little bit in Iowa just for a variety of reasons, but, but access to mental health services was one. I think prevention and primary care, oh, always an opportunity there. Yeah. Um, and so that was another one. I think that we have a community health resource guide or a community resource guide um, that, that was some of the work that came out of that. So I think one of the things that we recognized was there are a lot of really good and useful resources in, in the region but 
people just didn't know. Right? You know, they yes. didn't know they existed. And so this this community resource guide piece was was really that to say, it, you know, if it's if it's a mental health service, if it's a dental service, if it's um, you know substance abuse disorder service, right? Casa domestic abuse, yes. I, you know, I think all of those things and, and trying to create this kind of one-stop shop resource. Right. So, so if I, they're the best kept secret in the lakes area, they're not doing anybody any oh, good. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and so I think that that was a really tangible piece that came out of that. Um, so that, that was some of the things from the last okay. survey. Okay. Well, here we are. We got uh, into 2021 and uh, getting the, the survey going out again. Do you think having been through a year and a half of a pandemic is going to play in see wrinkles that maybe you never saw thought you would see three years ago? Yeah, I you know I I just think for us as we've kind of navigated through COVID in the last eighteen months uh, of the things that we've learned. I mean, certainly things we would have done differently, knowing what we know now. Things that that you know that we did well that we, that we'd replicate in the future. Um, I, I think, and I think there's one of one of the questions on the the community survey asks about COVID and, and really our response to that. So right. it'll be interesting to see, but but I do think that from I think to the extent that anybody had any doubt about the importance of public health prior to the to COVID should have no doubt now yeah you know what what an important role that that they play so so my yes to answer your question i think we will see i think part of our future planning is is certainly significantly impacted by the last 18 months yeah there's probably plenty of people that 18 months ago didn't know we had a public health director didn't know we had an emergency <laughs> management director right. you know yeah. And, yeah. and wow are we glad those people were in oh, place right, now right yeah in all things i think in and we've done a i i think an acceptable job over the last five to ten years really spending time on emergency management disaster planning and those sorts of things and, and have taken those drills seriously have have been actively involved in it and, and I think that that set a real positive stage for us as we you know as we kind of came into COVID but and, and you know the issue with COVID still today is there's just a lot of conflicting information yes and, and I think it's also become very polarizing that you know I you know, my take is we're a science-based organization, so you know we should rely on science and data. And, and sometimes uh, I think it depends on where you get your science and where you get your data, right? And so it's it's really become kind of a, as you know, a, a polarizing uh, discussion in, in and the it country. Has been. And so. it had to have been tough for you guys when you've got two sciences out there right. professing. Ours is the one. Right. If you listen to that, you're, you're, you know, something bad's going to happen to you. No, no, no. If you, you know, and, yeah. and, yeah. and it has made it difficult. And I'm sure making decisions over the last 18 months, uh, you, you gotta. Do you go with your gut? Do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how I, you I, do yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I would tell you, you know, I've, I've gotten, and and I was maybe a little bit uncomfortable with this before COVID. But, but I've gotten pretty comfortable with the fact of, of not thinking definitively. Yeah. That, that you know, uh, to, to make it, you know, I could make a statement today, three days from now, because of prevailing science or evolving science or guidance from whomever, that I change it. Right. And, and, and prior to that, I would have struggled doing that. Yeah. Because it's like, but, but the downside to that is, is, is you feel like you've lost a significant element of control. Yeah. You know, you're not being strategic, you're reacting to everything. Right. And, and I think, I, getting back, sorry, getting back to the, the China piece of it, I, I think that does give us, relative to COVID, I think there's an opportunity for people to comment, hey, how, how do you think we did or didn't do? Right. And then I think the broader part of that is the, the broader community health needs and what role do we play? Right. Because sometimes we don't play a role. You know, mental health services would be an example of that. Other than you know, triaging mental health crisis, mental health intervention through our ER, we don't provide mental health services. Right. 
And, and so, you know, part of our role then in the community health needs assessment is to become a facilitator of discussion to say, how, how might that look and who are the stakeholders that need to be involved in that? So, right. so we don't have any, I, I think, misconception that, that, that we own that community health needs assessment. But if we're going to do it and we've identified something, then we do need to be you know, a facilitator in some of those discussions. Right. So. Well, it, it's no different than, you know, some of the changes you've made over the year, uh, whether, you know, uh, new surgery center, robotic surgery, you know, you look at, here's some areas where we could grow and, right. and really believe our community would benefit from it. And, and you make those long-term plans and you make those progressions and, and the community's better for it. Yeah. 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 So on back to the uh, back to the survey. <laughs> we don't get a chance to talk no, very that's often. That's right. So, uh, how do people take part in it? Where can they find it? And what what kind of date line are we looking at? Yeah. So so a couple of different ways. I, I instead of giving you the specific website to the survey, which has a bunch of numbers and letters and otherwise, <laughs> I, m my encouragement would be if you go to our website www.lakeshealth.org you can access the link there. Yeah. In fact, I think it's it flows across the top of our, our web, our homepage right now. So, so that's probably, if, if you're comfortable filling out online surveys, that's the easiest way to do it. I think if you're not, or if you don't have access, you can pick up a hard copy survey at, at here, at mm -hmm. Lakes Regional Healthcare, actually at our East Desk. And you can also pick one up at the Bedell Family YMCA. So what want to be really conscientious about giving everyone an opportunity to fill it out, right. you know, should they choose to. So, so to the deadline, so September 28th, we'd like to have all of those surveys back in by September 28th. Um, seemed like you had another question for me in that, but maybe that was... I, th I think we covered it. <laughs> well, and what kind of, uh, how long will it take to kind oh, of yes. process that and, and it, it, yeah. come back with things? So, so my, my guess is, is that, so we'll, we'll analyze that data through the end of the calendar year. I think the formal community health needs assessment and the subsequent health improvement plan that supports it, I think actually have to be done by July 1st of 2022. Okay. So, so that's I may I may have misstated that timeline, but I think that it's close, Jeff. So. Okay, very good. Well, it just goes to to show you the commitment Lakes Regional has uh, to our area. You know, you could sit in a, a room like we are here with uh, your board, with uh, uh, all your doctors, and make guesses for the the next three years. But it's when you reach out to the people who are going to be receiving the care, right? Uh, to say. What are, your, what are your needs? What are you seeing out there? Right. And that's why it's important for people out there to, if, if you have needs that you think maybe we could do better in in this area, that's why you do the survey. No, absolutely. And, and, and to add clarity to that as well. So, it, so part, part of it, I, I think, is an assessment of Lakes Regional Healthcare, Dickinson County Public Health at, at some basic level. But that's not why we're asking the question. You get right. the opportunity to share that if you'd like. But, but it's much broader than that. As I said, as we talk about mental health, as we talk about you know, uh, food insecurities and, and things right. like that. I, again, those aren't necessarily things we own, but they're certainly things we hope to have some influence over. Right. And, and so, anyway, that's, that, that's why I hope that, that people take the time. I just did the survey the other day. It took me five minutes. Um, granted, I didn't add a lot of comments because <laughs> seem, seem like they may be a little biased, right, and so right, I, you, right. you know, didn't didn't do that. But but it's not a huge time commitment to make this happen. No, so. it's not. I think I think if you were lengthy in your comments, I think it would take you ten minutes or fifteen minutes to complete the survey. So I very good. Yeah. All right, my friend. Otherwise, everything good here at the the hospital. I see we have a new doctor and uh, yeah, Doctor Nelson started this morning. Doctor Whitney Nelson. She's uh, kind of grew up down around the Carroll area and. and uh, came back from the Wichita, Kansas residency program, so excited to have yeah. her. Uh, have a doctor retiring, Dr. Tom Kalkoff is retiring after a number of years of, of uh, compassionate and caring service to, yeah. to the Lakes region. He, he will uh, you know, certainly be missed. Much so. thanks to Dr. Kalkoff yeah. for his years to our area. So, All right, my friend, well, have a very 
happy Labor Day weekend, you, you and well. your family. I think we certainly will, and thank you for being with us. Yep, thank you, Jeff. Jason Harrington again here, the CEO President of Lakes Regional Healthcare. We thank him for taking a few minutes with us. We thank you for watching us right here on Okaboji Broadcast. Okaboji Broadcast from the studios at Historic Arnold's Park Amusement Park is brought to you in part by the headquarters of the University of Okaboji is at the Three Suns, open Monday through Saturday 10 to 5 and Sunday from 10 to 4. The Scott Troutman State Farm Agency in Spirit Lake. Quest Wealth Management, a financial advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, advisor Jan Spielman, AJ Spielman, and Erica Wachholz. Duckies Marine and Motorsports Repair in Spirit Lake. Bank Midwest, Dream Big, Plan Wisely, Live Well. Lakes Regional Healthcare and Avera Partner. Ruth Van Locker at the Lake, where carnivores are welcome on Hill Avenue in Spirit Lake. Beck Engineering in Spirit Lake. B Radiant Laser Skin Studio in the Okaboji Plaza in Okaboji. 